So the iPhone 12 and 12 Pro have been leaked to heck and back by now. I mean, you pretty much know everything about it. And we know when it's coming out, we know about how much it costs, how many versions there are. It's, it's not really that much of a surprise anymore. But what's interesting about it is as much technology as will be in that phone, it's not really for you. Very likely it isn't for me either. As a matter of fact, the vast majority of people who will probably watch this video already know this. iPhone 12 isn't for them. And you want to cancel that phone as badly as I want to cancel my co-host from GadgetCast, Greg. I've been trying to cancel this dude for a long time. Please check out the podcast in the link below. Come to the live stream on Sundays and please help me cancel that dude. It's about time we just get rid of Greg once and for all. Please help me cancel Greg. In the meantime, you can try to cancel the iPhone 12, 12 Pro, 13, 14, or 15, but it won't even matter because this phone was never made for you. But one thing's for sure. The iPhone 12 was made for anybody. It just wasn't made for everybody. I'll tell you what that means right after this. This, this is, uh, you know you listening to, to Travis. What up, players? Welcome back. And for all you new people, welcome. My name's Travis and I do tech videos every single week and have a blast doing them. If that sounds like fun to you, sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Anything I talk about will be in the description below. But for now, let's just get into the video. Now, while there is a contingent of fans all over the world that absolutely do not like iPhones, they continue to sell well. As a matter of fact, I did a video about how well some of the iPhones sold in my last video. I'll make sure to leave that in the description below. You're absolutely gonna wanna watch that because the context for this video really kind of relies on your understanding of that video. Don't worry, I'll put it in the end screen and stuff too. You need to watch that one. And to understand what I talked about there is to understand what I'm about to talk about now. The iPhone series of phones really are just about for everybody, although not just anybody likes them. That is a very interesting distinction because while just about anyone can use an iPhone, for the most part, they actually can be used by, I think, just about everybody, there are instances where people will not use them. And some of them I've seen in the comments section, which I, I just don't understand, I don't get it. Now, while I personally don't care what phone you use, it really doesn't matter, it's a tool to me. It's like buying a hammer and then calling some brand loyalty on the hammer. Like, your hammer's terrible, man. That You bought a hammer from Home Depot? Who does that? So I find it equally strange when people start trolling people about their phones. It doesn't make any sense to me. So I don't really care if you use an iPhone or not, but it is interesting some of the reasoning behind why some people don't. I kind of question that. And I don't believe some people. Like, some people will talk about patriotism and then support a South Korean company over an American one when they're American. So I don't really get that. And while there are bigger creators that have seen more comments than me, I have seen some crazy comments. I've seen some craziness. Why people don't like iPhones. And it made me think, the iPhone 12 will be a great phone and it just won't be for most people. As a matter of fact, the majority of people who watch this video, it's not for you. It wasn't made for you. It's made for someone else. And that goes back to something that Steve Jobs said a long time ago. Steve Jobs once said, you've got to start with the customer experience and work back towards the technology not the other way around. Now that's a critical piece of information because this actually falls in line with Amazon's work back from the customer theory. And this is actually really smart, but it does make technology take a back seat. And that indeed is where some people draw the line. There's a certain type of person that will watch YouTube videos about smartphones. And a lot of those people want control of their phones. Not all of them, there's a ton of Apple fans that obviously watch Apple content. But Android fans will also watch Apple content to hate on it for some weird reason. But those Android fans want more control over their experience. I actually don't disagree with this. I actually totally agree with this. But Apple's not really ever gonna give you that. This has been the case for a very long time as Apple's controlled the experience on pretty much all of their devices since the beginning of time. They believe they understand the customer experience better than you do. Let me say that again. Apple believes they understand the customer experience better than you do. How do they know that? Data. And with that data, they're making all types of decisions based on the hardware and software. And by and large, they've been right. Again, that video I talked about the other day will tell you whether or not they've been able to sell these phones that they're making the decisions for you. Now, having said that, that doesn't jive with a lot of people's personal sensibilities. Me personally, I like to be able to completely customize my phone. And that's just not something you're gonna get on an iPhone. You're gonna get a lot of other central things that work great on an iPhone, which I'll talk about here in a minute. But more than that, you just don't get to control very much. For example, the operating system is obviously closed. You're not getting a whole bunch of variants of iOS. You're getting one, the one from Apple. That's it. 
you're not getting touch whiz, you're not getting custom, uh, Samsung experience, you're not getting Oxygen OS, you're not getting One UI, you're not getting any of these things on top of iOS, you're just getting iOS. There's good and bad to that. Obviously for updates, you get updates immediately on iOS and not for Android because each one needs to update. But you also just get the one experience and if you don't like that, you're kind of stuck. Then when Apple decides to do something like remove the headphone jack, you're just stuck. That's it. If you're in iOS, that's it. That's your one choice. Headphone jack's gone. On the Android side of things, there are still phones sold today with a headphone jack. So you have that option of at least changing manufacturers and staying with Android. If you like customization, if you like choice, Android's kind of your answer. It's not gonna be iOS. And just because you write a petition to bring something like USB-C to an iPhone, it's not really gonna change Apple's mind. As a matter of fact, there's been tons of things that fans have wanted from Apple that they've never given them. Uh, I could make a long list of things, but instead of sitting here and just pooping all over Apple, I'm just gonna go ahead and move on to the next thing. But I'm sure most of you can leave me a comment below and tell me one of the many things that you've wanted from Apple that they've just never given you. Uh, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Things like the lightning adapter will never go to USB-C. Why? Lightning is great and fine for just charging your phone. That's about it. But USB-C gives you all types of options. Now there's two ways of looking at this. Lightning has been controlled by Apple since the beginning, so they've had tolerances and understanding of what Lightning can do and have never had the controversy of USB-C when it launched. And some of you may not remember when USB-C launched because you didn't have a phone that supported it, so you missed out on the long period of time where you would go to Amazon and buy a USB-C cable that wouldn't work with your device. That was really a thing, and it was bad. Matter of fact, there was a guy who actually bought like every single USB cable and like reviewed it on Amazon so you knew which one to buy because some of the capabilities didn't work. The standard was wonky as heck. So yeah, Apple kind of dodged that bullet because they absolutely controlled Lightning from the beginning. But Lightning is many years old now, so it's kind of showing its age. Things like even faster charging, or sometimes more importantly, faster file transfers are just not possible with a lightning adapter, which is why things like the iPad Pro have USB-C. And you might be thinking, yeah, well, Apple did it there, why won't they do it on the phone? Again, Apple has their own sensibilities when it comes to the phone and the tablet, they're two different things, and it doesn't matter if you want a USB-C on the phone, they've already decided for you. And features tend to lag on iPhones, whether it be software or hardware, let's talk a little bit about both, you're not gonna be the first one to get them. Although sometimes Apple will make it seem like it's the first time you've ever seen something. I know it's kind of weird. They've been around for many years on Android, but we'll pretend it's new when it hits iOS. But there is the relevance thing. First of all, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, when the iPhone came with wireless charging, they made it seem like it was an amazing thing that we hadn't seen before. Of course, for many years, Android phones had been able to wirelessly charge. But the fact remains, whenever Apple gets something on their phones, it then becomes relevant. Case in point, Wireless charging can be found all over the place, including like Starbucks or airports or whatever the case may be. But it was much harder to find those before the iPhone came out with wireless charging. You just didn't see it. And I know someone in some small city or something's gonna say it's always been at their local Arby's or something like that. Listen, be honest with yourself. It was not nearly as many places as it was after the iPhone launched. And Android had it for years. But again, you have to wait a long time for that. I've been enjoying wireless charging for at least five years before the iPhone got at least, I think maybe even longer than that. For some people having a 4K display on their phone with 120 Hertz or even 144 Hertz, which is actually available on Android, is not only not important, they don't know what the heck that is. And when you tell them that you have a Snapdragon 865 on your phone, they're gonna look at you like you're crazy. And maybe if they're your grandmother, they'll say that's really nice. And then there's things like multitasking, which have never quite really come to Apple. Uh, listen, I know some people think that iOS has multitasking, but I've talked about this a billion times before. That thing ain't no multitasking, man. It's, 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 it's not good. I actually made a video about that where I'm just confused at the rules of multitasking on iOS, if you, you can't call it that. It's not multitasking, it's put one window up here and then go to this window, and then when you go back to the first window, it may or may not open, I don't know. Like, you just don't know. So if you're looking for a custom experience, something that you can make your own in every single way, the iPhone 12 is not going to be for you. None of these things are changing. As a matter of fact, it brings me up to the sameness factor across these phones. Now remember what Steve Jobs said, work from the experience backwards. So he's not worried about the technology. Apple's not worried about being cutting edge on the technology. They're more worried about the experience. And that is actually where the iPhones tend to shine. Their integration with other Apple products is second to none. And the ease and smoothness of their phones is again, second to none. And 
If you've only kind of used an iPhone for a little while and then didn't like it and go back and think you're an expert on it, I'm gonna tell you right now, you're not. The reality is the base core things that you use your phone for the most, the majority, the maybe 80% of things you use your phone for, the iPhone is excellent at, like absolutely excellent at. And that is the important part. That is what most people are looking for from their phone, something that can work, that they can rely on, that's gonna give them exactly the features they want, the battery life they need, and something they don't have to think about. And like it or not, Apple phones give you that. All the iPhones give you a very simple experience that just plain works. It just works. Thus, why they sold so many phones and continue to sell so many phones, as I said in that last video. Once again, hate to keep bringing it up, kind of an important video. So does this mean the iPhone 12 is gonna be a terrible phone? No, it's just gonna be so similar to the iPhone 11 or 11 Pro that I can't possibly get excited about it. Like, will I get it? Maybe? probably because of the channel, but my general sensibilities make me want to get another Android phone, which if OnePlus had not decided to charge so much money for a phone that I can't get myself to spend so much money for, I'd probably already have, I'd probably already be back on Android. So now I got to look towards Samsung and hope that the Galaxy 20 isn't $12,000. Uh, it probably will be. Anyway, leave me a comment below. Let me know what phone are you excited for because I'm pretty sure it's not the iPhone 12 or what do you love about iOS and iPhones? Plus, once again, please make sure you watch this video. You'll learn so much about why Apple is selling so many phones. Peace and love.